Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to my channel, Victoria here at Radiant Moon Tarot. This is your January and February singles readings for all Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. So we're having a look and see what energies are activating for you. Thank you very much in the next two months. All right, so uh, things do take sometimes a while to play out. So we're gonna just kind of go with the energies here. We do have Pluto packing a punch. For everybody, Pluto is um, coinciding when the sun enters into Aquarius. This is when Pluto is entering an Aquarius as well. And there it will stay for about the next nine months. It'll tiptoe back into Capricorn a little bit about September and then come back out into Aquarius where it will really stay for, oh, uh, quite a number of years. All right. So in this Plutonian energy, this does bring about endings, big endings. Pluto goes to the depths, goes to the underworld. So there might be something that is revealed to you over the next couple of months. And this might be something, um, an aspect of yourself. This can be something that someone reveals to you. This could be part of your of your healing journey of letting go, of preparing for new love. But this can also be something where maybe someone already does have a crush on you, has some interest in you, and this is where they come out in the open. So Pluto endings, new beginnings, change, transformation, growth, all of that stuff. All right, and so for some of you, you are cleansing and purging in this energy, right? You're really wiping the slate clean and getting ready for new love into your life. Um, Pluto is the planet of power. So this can be where you really do get your power back. So if something's been holding you up, holding you back, if something's had some sort of control over you, right, you are getting your mojo back. It's time for you to really know who you are, what you want, and recognize the personal power that you have to get it, all right? And that's a great thing to, to do because quite often what holds us in place and what holds us back from finding love is quite often fear-based and it doesn't always uh, it doesn't always we don't always recognize it right so you might be doing a little bit of searching for some energies or for some reasons and you just might find them so we're starting out oh boy we're starting out with the tower card here for you guys expect the unexpected okay so Mars rules the tower card fiery and passionate energy right but also uh, maybe some challenges here with this one but this is a massive shift of your energy the tower does quite often come about through some sort of revelation through some sort of information and it's something that rocks your world so this can be something internal something coming in through your crown chakra something intuitive based um, but this can also be some external thing and when we get the tower the it's the shedding of the old so that we can clear a path and make room for the new um, this can be some surprise headed your way okay or again this is very powerful energy right the tower always shows up for our best and highest good and it's to get us out of our comfort zone. It's to get us moving and shaking, right? We're, we're going in circles. Nothing's, things aren't working the way that we want them to where we currently sit, where we currently are. So certainly um, over the next couple of months, probably some really powerful changes for you. Um, over the next, probably up until the spring, I would say, right? So this energy is being activated for you over the next two months. Um, but I would say by the eclipse season, you'll recognize something, something will come to light, or you'll really figure out what something has already been about. We've got the lover's card here as well. So this is beautiful. So yes, yeah, someone could possibly be revealing their feelings for you with that lover's card there. It is Gemini energy. So it's air sign energy. When we get um, the air sign energy activated, uh, things move a little bit faster. Things are clearer. Um, things aren't as heavy. <clears throat> and where we've been for quite some time, and especially over the last few years, is with that Pluto and, and Capricorn energy, it's very lesson based um it's very slow moving and it can be very exhausting right it's like okay universe i've learned a million life lessons uh can we just let this one go um because it is saturn uh is involved with that right so this is lighter brighter um faster moving for everybody throughout 2024 and keep in mind 2024 is an eight year two plus two plus four is eight 
So a lot of abundance, a lot of possibilities, a lot of potential, and your ability to manifest is really great. But the lover's card can bring in new love, true love. It can bring soulmates together, but it can also um, represent a choice. Choosing love, not choosing love. Choosing between, maybe some of you have multiple people to choose from. It's like, oh, <laughs> the cream of the crop here, right? So that can be really exciting for you or frightening, depending on how you look at it, okay? But I feel here with this Mars energy that, yes, I mean, we already said expect the unexpected um, because Pluto can bring surprises as well, um, but you're ruled by Mars, so this can really be you stepping into your personal power, recognizing what you want, your finding your inner balance and harmony here, um, because the lover's card is where you can really connect with your higher self. You're getting your ducks in a row. And once you do that, this is where things really do shift for you in an incredibly positive way. But yes, some of you could possibly have a Gemini person in the mix, or it could just be all this air sign. You're talking to more people, you're getting outside, you're moving, you're shaking. And don't forget here, Aries, we're coming up to your astrological new year. So this can be a really transformative time for you in the best of ways. We have the Seven of Swords. <clears throat> mm -hmm. well, we have the Lover's card for the second time. Highly significant. All right, and I'll go through that again in a minute. Uh, we've got the Five of Swords here in reverse. The Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, the tables are turning. The tides are turning for you. And we have the Star. There's that Aquarian energy. How beautiful for you guys. The back of the deck, we've got the Knight of Pentacles. All your hard work, your dedication is paying off for you. Put one foot in front of the other. Pay attention to whatever thoughts, whatever energies, whatever details come up and follow your path. It's beautiful energy. Some of you, yes, you've maybe been focusing on your work, on your career, on your finances here in this, but I do feel that you do have some goal or something that's manifesting into your world in a really wonderful way. Now, the Knight of Pentacles, um, when we have the bottom of the deck here, this can be a confirmation, but it can also be something that is hidden, right? It's under the bottom of the deck. So something that's hidden or something that's delayed or something that may be a bit of a surprise, the Knight of Pentacles as a potential person, right, can be someone who um, they're very goal oriented, they're very down to earth, they might be a little bit of a slow mover, um, but you can depend on them, you can rely on them, right? This can again also be you achieving your personal goals and maybe you do have some goals that you want to, um, that you want to uh, accomplish before you're fully ready to open yourself up to love whatever it is it's a great energy here if you are focused on your money your career you could potentially have a new job or you could be elevating your financial status there now we do have the seven of swords coming in here for you and this is um, part of uh, just part of the energy uh, coming your way and the seven of swords yes it can be some things that you're working through and in a very important way because this can be about trust right? There's mistrust, misdeeds, there's lies, deceits, betrayals, right? And so if you've been hurt from someone in the past, there could potentially be somebody and you're, some of you are, might be triggered with this one, okay? But the Seven of Swords can sometimes be someone trying to sneak back into your life, trying to crawl through that window, right? And, you know, and come on in and you're like, mm, I don't think so. So with that tower energy there, that Seven of Swords, it's like you're probably looking for the new unless someone has really changed unless there's some issues that have been resolved, right? This is a clearing of the path. So I feel like here that you may get some very, um, very important closure um, in the next couple of months. If you haven't already, it may catch you off guard um, or it could just be the opportunity that you've been waiting for to shut down a system, shut down a cycle, shut down a person. Now the Seven of Swords can also really just be about trust. And if you've been hurt before, if you've been lied and lied to and betrayed before, I feel like this is the energy that is um, that is being cleared out, right? That tower is here. It makes us uncomfortable. And sometimes it's within our control, sometimes not so much. And it feels like, oh my goodness, um, it feels scary, right? Um, but the thing is, is that we're carrying burdens, we're carrying things, we're carrying energies that are, are really inhibiting us um, from 
from getting something new and welcoming something new in. So I feel like here that you're learning to trust yourself again or you're recognizing maybe where you do need to put up some boundaries possibly there as well. Because that Seven of Swords can have you feeling a little wishy-washy. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Do I want love? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. So I feel like here you're really going to make a definitive decision. Okay. Um, with that Seven of Swords, we've got the Fool. Yeah. So if someone does try and come crawling back into your life in any way, shape, or form, you're like, uh-uh, you're dancing out into the sunset. You're taking that leap of faith. You're moving into the future. You're feeling a lot better about things, right? And you have sunnier skies ahead. And that tower energy, right, Where what those people are doing, jumping out of that tower is taking that leap of faith because where they are right now is not the one place that they want to be, right? So here you are shedding your... Um, shedding your inhibition inhibition shedding your fears right you're trusting yourself when we have the fool card we trust ourselves to make the right choices and the right decisions for ourselves right we don't hold back anymore so skip to skip to my loo my darling you are going into that future new people new you the future is bright this is exciting but we do have this lover's card coming in a second time now whenever we do get um uh, the same energies, the same cards, right? This is really spirit saying, pay attention, pay very close attention. This is important. It's a giant exclamation mark, okay? It's like spirit whacking you on the side of the head and going, come on, wake up. So with the lover's card here, yes, some of you could have new beginnings with a Gemini person, someone with Gemini in their chart. This can also be um, very much this new love, right? New love, soulmate connections, right? You know, you find your number one, okay? Or you are on a quest, to find your soulmate and you just might find them or you're open to all kinds of possibilities. This is the blessings that are headed your way over the next couple of months. The lover's card is the energy benefiting you the most. So love is in the air. Also getting yourself aligned with the right energy to attract the right person into your world, right? This is aligning for you. So your ability to really get all of your ducks in a row right? And whatever, remember, whatever energy we put out is what we attract back. So that's awesome, awesome energy. We also have the three of cups. So this is probably a little bit more of a social time for you. Maybe you're getting out of your shell. Um, you might even have some helpful friends. The three of cups is a card of socialization. It's also one of celebrating some really good news, some good connections. Now it's also a card of friendship. And so this can be where maybe you're, um, you know, you're open to love, right? You're uh, meeting new people, you're trying new things, um, you know, or you're just feeling a little bit more positive and lighter. And in this energy here, you could potentially have some help from friends um, to find new love, okay? Or you might accidentally meet somebody while you are out having a good time. Remember, when our vibe is high, when we're laughing and we're smiling and, you know, we're socializing and things, right, we draw people in. So this is a great energy for you. But yes, some of you might have some really good news to share, to celebrate. There might be a party um, somewhere here. So if you get inv invited to a party or something like like that or maybe even um, to a, a, a weekend getaway or something because the fool likes adventures so some of you might be traveling in the next few months and uh, it feels like you could potentially meet someone there or this is where a big shift happens for you you get yourself in a good space it's just the break the little vacation that you needed the getaway that you needed and this is where it can be a big turning point for you so the three of cups socializing um, getting together with people but also get ready to maybe really celebrate something really positive something really wonderful so this is awesome awesome energy now there could potentially be okay and that won't speak to all of you but there could potentially be a connecting of souls okay from someone that you already know and with the three of cups coming in here we also do have the knight of pentacles at the back of the deck there could be someone in your workplace or someone already in your friendship or acquaintance circle that may have a crush on you or you might have a crush on them. So there could be something there that is revealed. All right. Now the challenge is letting things go because we do have the five of swords in reverse. There's been something here that you've been holding on to for a long time. Okay. And we all know that communication is the key. So here in this energy, sometimes it's um, a challenge 
to look into the future. Sometimes it's a challenge to recognize that not everybody is going to be untrustworthy, right? There are trustworthy people out there. This can be sometimes a challenge to work through some issues, right? Whatever's holding you back, it is a five. Fives are challenges and obstacles anyway, right? But they're also exciting opportunities to change. So there's something here that you're working through over the next couple of months, but I do feel that uh, you're really getting things back on track and you're really setting the stage for some more excitement in a very positive way in the future. And it's about communication, so maybe you're changing your communication style, but again, you could also be shutting someone down. But you're gonna do that, I feel, even though it's a challenge, okay? You may be doing that with kindness and compassion. We've got the Six of Swords here. It's a, ch it's a challenge moving on. It's a challenge letting things go, moving forward. It's a challenge believing that there are sunnier, brighter, calmer, more wonderful things ahead for you. Um, but just because it's a challenge doesn't mean it's impossible. It's just something that you need to work through. So I do feel there's a healing energy coming in here. And, you know, believe it or not, that Plutonian energy, right, that can bring about a change a shift and healing for you right because we are purging we are cleansing and we are moving forward in a better healthier way and so this could be that there so the six of swords is actually where we find calm and peace after the challenges that come with the five of swords it's a card of protection it's a card of guidance and it is one of moving forward all right and so whatever it is here there is something propelling you into a better tomorrow so it might take a while and sometimes we need to do a little bit of work, okay, or a little bit of soul searching, but I feel like here you'll get there. We do have the Wheel of Fortune here for you and this is your advice from Spirit. Remember, your own energy can keep this wheel turning in the direction that we want it to turn into. The Wheel of Fortune is a change, a shift in cycle for you, right? We've got that with the Tower. We've got that uh, with the Fool card, bringing in some new energies, new connections, new people into your world. And so this is an exciting time. There's some good karma, good luck coming your way. Awesome, awesome energy. So, but Spirit really what does want to remind you here about the ebb and the flow of life and the cycles that we go through. There's certain things that we have to go through, certain things that we need to deal with and that we do need to cleanse and purge and recognize or learn from in our life. And when we do that and when we are, um, you know, we've done our work, we've done our process, right? This is propelling us forward um, in a much better, much more exciting way. So it's an awesome energy all coming in here for you. So even if you're caught in the weeds and if you're feeling a little down in the dumps or you're feeling a little stuck, right? Keep doing what you're doing. That Knight of Pentacles says you are on the cusp of success and don't give up, right? Just pay attention, keep an open mind, and um, you'll be amazed what may come in here for you. But the Wheel of Fortune, the tides are turning for you, and yes, they absolutely are because we've got the Star card coming in here for you. Now the Star is that Aquarian energy, and of course, what do we have? We have Aquarian, uh, Aquarian season coming in uh, towards the end of January. We've got Pluto entering Aquarius, so all this is happening around the 20th, 21st of January. Um, and you may or may not feel the energies right away. You might not feel that shift right away. For some of you, bam, it will. You will. Um, for others of you, it'll be a little bit slower. But the star, this, this Aquarian energy lightens things up. And whenever we get this, this is a card of serendipity, a card of peace, a card of balance, a card of healing. But it's also a very magical kind of energy as well. And this is where we make our wishes and dreams come true. So wish upon that star. Set your intentions. Know what you want. Um, stay positive. Stay focused on the future. Um, embrace change, right? The Wheel of Fortune change. By the way, the Wheel of Fortune can also bring in surprises and something sudden and unexpected. Ruled by Jupiter, our most beneficial planet. And it is in the upright. Okay, so, uh, so if you have Jupiter anywhere in your chart, you can first certainly have a little bit of luck on your side. But this star energy does bring miracles and blessings to you. It restores hope for the future, right? But it's also one that reminds us of the infinite abundance of the universe, your infinite potential to attract what it is that's going to be good and positive and healthy for you um, in the future, the right kind of people at the right place, the right time. The stars are aligning for you. For some of you, 
miracles and blessings happening right now. For some of you, it's going to take a little while longer to play out because there's something you got to deal with here. But keep this open mind, keep this positive outlook, and you'll be amazed what happens. And the star does bring success and abundance into your life. But again, miracles and blessings happen. Sometimes right here, right now, it is the big yes card, okay? And sometimes it takes that little bit longer because it's divine timing at play for you. But don't give up hope, all right? Keep that open heart, keep that open mind. And we've got the King of Pentacles here for you as well. Well, okay, so the King of Pentacles with the Knight of Pentacles at the back of the deck and the King of Pentacles coming in here, this can be you achieving a personal goal, something you've worked very hard towards, whether it's something um, just about preparing yourself uh, to, to welcome love into your life or something with your money, your career, your home, right? That um, it, I feel here you've got success on the horizon. So you're about to achieve something big. Um, and this can really kind of take a lot of pressure off of you most likely. But the King of Pentacles can also represent that, yes, I mean, we could potentially have um, somebody who you are connecting with through your workplace in some way. Now, it may be someone you work with. It may be um, a customer. It could be someone that you meet on the way to work, like if you stop for a morning coffee, um, if you go out for lunch, right? It could be someone in a different department or something, right? So it doesn't have to be like someone that sits right beside you and that you have to talk to every day. Um, but you just never know, right? Because there's a lot of very... Um, uh, very interesting energy coming in here for you. All right. But if that's the case, then that's great, right? Because it's a good, solid connection. All right. But um, the king of pentacles as a person can be someone who very reliable, very dependable, very committed, very likely, very business oriented, very good with money. Um, this can be someone who um, has quite a bit of money actually um, in some way but the king of pentacles settles down for the long term right is not a fly-by-night energy they don't always wear their heart on their sleeve necessarily uh, sometimes they might come across as as a little bit boring but I feel underneath there's um, you know there's a lot of love to give there right and for the long term this person would not run away from a commitment but I do also feel that the Knight of Pentacles is you, you're um, feeling good, you're feeling abundant, you're feeling successful, and this is awesome. Oh, there we go. Look at that. The bottom of this deck, we've got the Ten of Pentacles. So yeah, I do feel that some of you are very much achieving a goal in regards to your money, your career, your home, your stability, and your security. And sometimes we don't always open ourselves up for love because we don't feel that we've accomplished something that is a personal goal or we don't feel sometimes mm, don't sell yourself short here Aries because sometimes we don't feel as though we have enough to offer right and it's like okay I'm in credit card debt um, I don't live in the best house right and you know so sometimes you know or my career isn't where I want it to be and so sometimes we do put those material world goals and pressures on us um, on ourselves right and you know if someone's really just going to judge you by what what kind of house you live in or what kind of job you have right well maybe they maybe they're not quite the person for you right um you know not everyone that crosses our path is the right person okay but i do feel like whatever it is that you've got your goals on what you've got your sights on i do feel like you're gaining a little bit more stability and security in your world you're feeling a lot more better and confident about yourself a lot more better um <laughs> a lot better shall we say that um but with the ten of pentacles here it is um abundance a lot of abundance in your reading and this is great energy because there's a lot of potential here for you should you choose it now with the ten of pentacles there can also be because it is one of having good solid relationships in your life good friends good family that kind of thing and again we already did touch upon that there may be someone that you already know or that someone in your friendship circle may help help you in some way to find love because the ten of uh the ten of pentacles is a card of inheritance but we can inherit a lot of things we can inherit something. It's just something that is gifted to us, something that's handed down to us in some way. So yes, you could possibly have a friend that says, hey, let me help you. I want to give you, I want to, you know, really want to do this for you, right? You know, that kind of thing or, you know, and it feels like it's a good thing, right? It's not like, you know, it's not like one of those things where, you know, you have a blind date set up and it's someone completely wrong, 
for you because it's likely someone that actually knows you quite well and they know what it is that you're looking for right or potentially even not necessarily just what uh, you're looking for and what would be good for you but also um, you know what is maybe you don't even know right maybe someone that you would normally reject right that's not coming out quite right but um, sometimes we we pass people by because we're like, Ugh, yeah, that doesn't, that's not really my type. Um, but then your friend know, might know somebody a little bit better. And, and, you know, especially with the King of Pentacles showing up here because they don't always wear their heart, their emotions on their sleeve. And so your friend may actually know them um, a lot better and know that beneath the surface, they're exactly the right person for you. So, you know, let your friends help you. We have peace coming out here for you guys. This is awesome. We already have an element of peace and calm and serendipity and healing and moving forward in a wonderful way coming in. And so, yes, we do have peace um, is restored. So this is about peace, forgiveness. This is about being kind to yourself and really um, getting yourself ready for better times ahead. There's something manifesting here for you with this in this deck whenever we do see that egg we do see something manifesting so get excited about the future you might have an opportunity to make peace with somebody um, especially if you have an ex if you've got any kids or anything like that maybe you're just done with fighting with them or you know with exchanging barbs and things like that and so this may be where you decide that you know what we need to change the way we deal with each other um, you know and even though people do have uh, ability to get under your skin especially exes they're usually exes for a reason right and you know maybe you do um, say you know what this not working is causing both of us a lot of grief you know let's just agree to disagree let's move forward um, let's try and do uh, communicate a little bit better so you could be doing that and that can actually really shift your energy we have by the book coming in here and this is uh, card number 11 actually so it can really show some new beginnings in there for you We've got some fresh energy coming in by the book is just really about putting one foot in front of the other to achieve your goals this is also one where you don't need to reinvent the wheel and especially when it comes to finding love, right? There's tried and true and tested ways that we can find love in our life. And, you know, you don't have to be the trailblazer, right? That trail has already been laid. So this can be, you know, maybe you are talking with a friend or something like that. And they're like, well, you know what? I know this is kind of unconventional, but this worked for me. Maybe this would work for you. Um, a lot of people do get set up by their friends, right? And it's tried and true and tested. So somewhere there, there could be a path that you don't need to you know, be really inventive, right? There's something there that, um, you know, that you can follow that other people have done. And you, did, you do tend to be a trailblazer, right? But you don't necessarily have to be, okay? You don't need to get like super crazy in your path for love. But this is also showing by the book that whatever you're doing is working, you are headed in the right direction, okay? And there's something really wonderful and magical for you right around the corner. So I'm going to leave this there for you. I hope there was something here. If so, please do take a moment to press like on this video. Um, it really does help me out when you give me that thumbs up. Free for you just takes a second. Um, comment on the video as well. Say hello. Where are you watching from? And uh, if you do enjoy my content, consider hitting that subscribe button. If you hit notification bell, you should always get notifications whenever I put up a new reading. So I thank you guys for watching. Check out your, uh, your January money and career readings. They're posted for you but also your 2024 outlook for the year ahead they are posted for you guys as well so i hope you guys have a wonderful next couple of months on your quest for love and remember be nice to yourself and show yourself a little bit of love as well i'll see you guys later bye